wow. Numero uno. Overproduction. Number two. Transportation. So it appears that the battery replacement timer is not actually measuring the voltage to tell you a low voltage. It's a, it's a dated timed um, warning basically. It says, you know, February 10th, 2016, today, uh, put that error up. So maybe it's not as imperatively today as it needs to be, but we'll order some up and get them in and then replace them and just keep it on schedule because what the batteries do is when you shut down the machine, it remembers all the servo positions and everything while the machine is off so that it always knows where it's at. No. Do it. No. Do it. No. Everything of value comes after much hard work. So I am taking a little trip to the store and you're coming with me. If you want to be. <laughs> yeah, thank you. you Have a good one. It's kind of weird, but uh, seems like people didn't really care. Um, so yeah, back to the shop. So my parts catcher seems to be working quite well, except it's catching a lot of chips as well. So these are the ones that missed, that fell out into the chips at the bottom. And I'll see how many uh, stayed in here. 12 parts caught. Seven parts fell out. Not really a good ratio, just above 50%. Um, ideally, I would use one tool for, like say this tool, for removing metal and this tool for finishing and parting off so that there's not a lot of chips entering the chip bucket, just the part. So as I'm filming more with my GoPro Hero 4 Black, I've got some other cameras, but I find the GoPro is just the quickest and easiest way of just picking up a camera and filming something rather than having a bigger, clunkier thing. And you can kind of put it anywhere. So I really like it. Um, I find the onboard microphone is picking up a lot of the background noise that you hear. A lot of the humming, a lot of the machine, like, like background, what's it called? White noise kind of thing. Um, so I'd like to get a clearer audio for you guys. So I have a lavalier mic, I have the GoPro adapter in the side, but this is a lot of cords and stuff, and I don't really want it here and plugged into the GoPro. I also have the, uh, have, where is it? The Zoom H1, which I haven't used very much. Um, my only complaint with this is that you have to Remember to turn it on every time you turn this on. You have to clap so that you can sync the audios together. And when we're taking so many cuts and so many scenes, uh, it's just more hassle, right? So something that I could have on board the GoPro would be really cool. So I did a quick Google search, lots and lots of options. I mean, people have done this already. So like there's that, that looks pretty cool. This looks cool. So the fuzzball, I noticed with this guy, Anytime you touch it or it rubs against something, you hear that fuzz noise. So the fuzz ball apparently gets rid of that. So I, I like this, it's attached to the camera. It's, it's one, one thing. Um, there's lots of options. There's like this guy that has the uh, attachment. So there are lots of options. I'll see, I'll play with it. The one thing I noticed with plugging this mic in is the audio is a lot, lot quieter coming out of here or coming into here than it is on the onboard microphone. So, you know, we'll play with it. Okay, so I went to the store, bought some stuff, as you saw. Um, now, the reason I went is for heat treating, I've been using Gold Bond medicated foot powder to kind of line the packets so the blades don't, or the packet doesn't stick 
to the blades. But I'm getting some like pitting issues that I'm not sure if you can see these here. Ah, closer. Ah, uh, where is it? I don't know. Kind of hard to see. Anyway, so I'm gonna see if the baby powder with just how will not leave those little pits since the gold bond has a bunch of stuff. Sodium bicarbonate, uh, the blah blah gum, eucalyptus stuff, mentha paprika, oil, benzo, stuff I can't pronounce. So yeah, see how that works. Right now I'm running an experiment. I've got the microphone here. Um, lathe is running, air compressor's on right now. Mori is running. How's the background noise? We'll see, I don't know. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, so today is Wednesday. This is our third day in a row of doing this daily vlog, I guess you call it. Um, plus the one I did last Friday. So four days in a row, really. Of, uh, of daily filming. It's, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of uh, just, it's, it's exciting for us to share everything that we're doing and it's fun to have the camera and to film all these little scenes and stuff. Um, my editing last night for the uh, video for yesterday called Heat Treating Something was uh, about two hours, I think, whereas it was four hours the day before. Uh, we filmed about half as much content yesterday, so I'm getting faster at editing. Um, it's still taking me two hours and it's causing me to stay up late and not get as good of a sleep and sleep in later than I usually like to. So it's, it's messing up my schedule. I need to find a groove so that I can, I can do more of this editing while also still having the life that I'm used to having at home. I don't know if we're gonna keep doing these daily things or if I'm not, I don't know. I'm enjoying it so we'll keep doing it as long as we can enjoy it and not steal all of our time. So lately we've been uh, if you've been following us for a little while, you know that we're talking a lot about lean manufacturing and trying to get into this whole two-second lean concept. It's actually starting to show itself now, which is really cool. Having everything with quicker setup times, less quantity, less batch work, more one-piece flow. I've got the lathe running right now. I've got the Mori making Norseman handles. Eric is doing another round of heat treating, and we did heat treating yesterday as well. Everything is becoming faster, and we're able to do more in a day less quantity of parts but more flow and since we manufacture pretty much every part in-house i'm going to do a video on like this is all the stuff we make it's not just one product it's lots of things um, being able to flow is very important to us and it's it's showing like it's working right now things are good so step by step every day we're getting closer and closer to lean and to one piece flow and it's it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. It takes, it's gonna take years. And the better we can do, a little bit better every single day, then it's gonna show ourselves. It's gonna show itself in, you know, two years, we're gonna look and be like, what were we doing before? I mean, we're already saying stuff like that, so. Lean is good, lean is life. I like it. We are still having leaking problems. People suggested, uh, I basically have to put a defoaming agent in there. Uh, one guy said a hot tub, like little tabs or liquid or whatever you put into a hot tub should do it. I just emailed my Qualichem coolant rep, we'll see what she says. 
and uh, I gotta get this fixed because this is silly. It's just foaming up too much. Um, other people said uh, it could be using water that's not hard enough, so it doesn't have enough minerals in the water. We're using distilled water from bu from buckets or from tubs. What are they called? Jugs. Um, to do the initial fill up and all top ups just because I wanted to create a standard of distilled water, not like our tap water is different than everybody else's tap water. So we're using distilled and it's just, it's foaming. So I got to figure it out. So Eric, he treated rask blades today. <laughs> That's what I've been looking for. Those look amazing. Okay. And it has the uh, the sticking. They didn't stick at all to the Not at all. packet. This was like quite a bit better than the baking powder or the uh, gold bond. And no pitting, it looks like. Okay. So yeah, baby powder. It's just talc and perfume. So something about the gold bond like would burn and pit into the <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. Door pattern looks good. Oh wow. It came out in heat treat. Pretty good. Oh, this one's just slightly not perfect. It's like slightly brown. Yeah. That's it, it or brown. Almost blue there. Okay. Okay, so three out of four though are perfect. And one is like 90%. Yeah. <laughs> not good enough. Start <laughs> over, throw it away. Yep. Sorry, number six damn steel. That's uh, Jonathan, Jonathan there, yeah. yeah. So I will say, it is really hard to not do batch work, like to avoid it. Like the lathe right now is all set up, it's making perfect screws. Part of my brain is telling me, just keep running it, it's all set up, everything's good, everyone coming off is perfect, just run tons of them. But the other part of me realizes I have to make pivots. I have to change it right now to make pivots because we're all out. There's no point in having 200 screws if we have no pivots. So it's this give and take and training yourself to realize, well, I need all my parts, not just lots of every single part. That's why batch work is easy to fall into, but you gotta train yourself out of it.